Hi, welcome to this week's Carolina Panorama Author Spotlight. Today we're talking to Dr. Walter Curry, and he's uh, talking about this book about the Thompson family. So, uh, glad to learn more about the book and Dr. Dr. Curry. Just kind of kind of go into the book and your background and and tell us more about it. Thank you. Um, hello, to everyone. Um, like to um, hope everybody is doing well. Uh, my name is Dr. Walter B. Curry, Jr. Um, I am a native of Orangeburg, South Carolina, and I am the founder of Renaissance Publications, LLC, which is a self-publication company that specializes in publishing genealogy books. Um, the reason why I started this company is because I have a vested interest in learning about my family history, both on my mother and father's side. And when I was coming up um, as a youngster, I remember my mother, Cheryl C. Wright Curley, Curry, who would always share with me her family stories. Uh, she was blessed to remember her uh, family stories, blessed to have met her grandparents, on both sides, her mother and father's side. And so the stories that she shared uh, were very vivid and real. She uh, pointed out places where she grew up, where her parents grew up, where her grandparents grew up. And so at the time when I was a teenager, I began my quest to learn more about uh, my family history. I discovered that my mother's side of the family has rich resources. Several uh, branches of the family, uh, relatives had family Bibles, rich oral histories, documents, and I discovered later on that uh, some of my relatives and ancestors were involved in many experiences that relate to African American history. And so we have a rich reflective generational diversity of African-American history in our family. And um, that motivated me, as well as talking to the senior members of my family, um, to write my award-winning book, The Thompson Family Untold Stories from the Past, 1830 to 1960. Uh, the Thompson family is the family of my great-grandmother, Alice Thompson Seawright. In this book, I have amassed research collected in a series of narratives about my ancestors and their relatives' um, experiences during slavery, the Civil War, post-Reconstruction, and um, all the way up to the Great Depression and World War II. And so in my book, the first chapter is called the Genesis. Uh, the Genesis means the beginning. The chapter details about the beginning of the Thompson family, started out uh, with seven brothers, um, seven brothers. And my ancestor, Logan Thompson, was one of the seven brothers. And so the first chapter goes into the origin of the Thompson family. It goes into their work at Smyrna Missionary Baptist Church, our family church, which is located in Sally, South Carolina. And it goes into the rich um, history of service in Smyrna Baptist Church. And um, I'm a descendant of Logan Thompson, who was a carpenter. He was a minister of the church and his uh, son, who was my great-great-grandfather, Oscar J. Thompson, who was a deacon. And there were several deacons um, and ministers in uh, the Thompson family. And so that is uh, chapter one. Chapter two um, deals with the narratives, uh, narrative essays. The book has uh, 10 narratives. Um, one narrative deals with the story of Millage Thompson. Uh, Millage Thompson was able to purchase his freedom. Not only he purchased the freedom of, of himself, he purchased his own freedom, 
but he also purchased the freedom of his two oldest children, uh, Charlotte Thompson Quarterbaum and Holly Thompson. And so after Millich uh, was able to purchase his freedom and the freedom of his two daughters, he became a landowner after the Civil War and he married Amanda Thompson Friday and they had 16 children. And he too became a deacon at Smyrna Baptist Church. Um, the second narrative goes into the story of my third great grandmother. Her name, uh, her name is Lavinia Corley Thompson. Her mother, Phyllis Corley, was on the Middle Passage. And the reason why that is a fact because Lavinia told a oral account of her enslaved experience when she told her grandchildren that her mother came here from Africa on a boat. When she came here, um, she was sold to Matthew Borden, and Matthew Borden had several slaves, and then he passed away. His friend, Joshua Corley, received possession of burdened slaves, which included Phyllis and her future husband, um, John. Um, John and Phyllis uh, later on got married. Before they got married, they had my third great grandmother, Lavinia Corley uh, Thompson. Just focusing on Thompson, her enslaved account, she said that her master sold her for $100, uh, $100. She was sold um, to a slave owner in Tallahassee, Florida. Uh, what happened was she told the slave master that I am not going to be sold. You might as well beat me. And so the slave master beat her down. At the time she was supposed to be sold, she had a white dress and the master beat her down so bad that her dress became red. And when I read that slave narrative, and that slave narrative was written down in the old Thompson family reunion book, I was very startled and I felt a sense of emotion because I read about slave narratives in college, but when you read a slave narrative from your own ancestor, comes from their mouth, it really changes your perspective about slavery. During the Civil War, Lavinia Master Samuel J. Webb joined the Confederacy and Lavinia joined him on September the 1st, 1863 as an enslaved cook in the Confederate Army. And after the Civil War, she married my third great grandfather, Logan Thompson. They had several children. And on May 25th, 1925, Lavinia applied for her Confederate pension. At the time, the state um, passed a law known as Act 63, which allowed enslaved people, African descent, to apply for a state Confederate pension. Thousands and thousands applied. However, they restricted it to cooks, body servants, and teamsters. And so my ancestor, Lavinia, she was a cook. She applied for a pension. Her pension was approved on May 25th, uh, 1925. And she had to get two witnesses for her pension to be approved. And those witnesses were Harrison Davis and Jane Anderson, uh, who were slaves with Lavinia on uh, the plantation, and they were slaves on the Corley Plantation, which is located on the banks of the South Edisto River near Sally, South Carolina. And so there are all other narratives in the book as well. One who named Philip Thompson, who was a, a soil conservationist. My second great grandfather, Oscar Thompson, who was a prominent landowner and agriculturalist. Um, the newspapers. Um, in the Sally area, lauded his work. The newspaper article mentioned that he uh, did three-year crop rotation, which was unheard of for black farmers at the time. And then later on, I find out that George Washington Carver was teaching black farmers to use different agricultural techniques 
so they could be profitable um, in their work. And so one of the agricultural techniques that he taught black farmers was a three-year crop rotation, and my ancestor was proficient in it. And so um, since this book has been published, I have done a lot of speaking engagements, um, lectures at, at, at educational institutions, historical societies, genealogical societies, museums. Last year on February the 1st, which is today, Black History Month, we were at the Aiken County Historical Museum and I partnered with the museum in which we created a all-inclusive exhibit named Sally and the Thompson Family, which highlighted um, the stories in the book, but also gave uh, real vivid examples of my ancestor experiences and relatives with artifacts and other sources of interest. And so on February 18th, the South Carolina Center for the Book uh, will be hosting me to do an author talk where I will go into the stories of my ancestors and relatives. It will be from seven o'clock to eight o'clock. You can register. The link is, is um, online. Please turn, tune in um, to learn more about my ancestors and relatives of the Thompson family. Can, 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 can I discuss, discuss the book award that you received? Yes. Um, the International Book Award um, is sponsored by the African American Historical and Genealogical Society, which is an organization that promotes African American genealogy and history in our country. Um, they have uh, several chapters um, all across the country. Um, this book award is very covenant to me and my family. I received this book award in 2019 in the nonfiction category um, genealogy. Okay. So, how, how can people obtain copies of your book? You can go to my website, which is www.renaissancepubllc.com, and you will see um, the front cover of the book. You click on the front cover of the book and it will connect you to Amazon where you could purchase the book. The cost of the book is $25 or you could go to www.amazon.com. Um, you could type in my name, Dr. Walter Curry, and it will pull up my book and you could order there as well. Do you have any other projects coming up? Yes, I, I do. Uh, several projects. Uh, one thing about COVID, you have to make some adjustments. And uh, certainly the Lord has blessed me uh, with many, many projects coming, coming up. This Thursday, I will be a guest on Blog Talk Radio, um, hosted by legendary award-winning author and genealogist um, Bernice Bennett. I will be um, talking about using um, narrative inquiry as a research methodology in uh, family history, teaches you how to write narratives about your family history, but also teaches you how to interpret those narratives as well. I am also working on my next book, which I'm very excited about. It is called Awakening, the C. Wright Ellison Family Saga, Volume 1, A Narrative History where I will go into uh, the narratives of the C. Wright Ellison family. My mama maiden name is the C. Wright. Several family members um, who I am related to, who I knew very well, are the legendary gospel singer Tommy Ellison. A lot of Tommy Ellison fans out there, uh, me and him were very close. He was my grandfather's second cousin. Many of us know Tommy as being a legendary gospel singer, all-time greats. But we're going to learn about Tommy's life and how he got started in gospel and what motivated him and who uh, were instrumental in his life and what led him to become one of the greatest 
of gospel singers of all time. But we also know that Tommy, with his group, the legendary singer stars, we're gonna learn why uh, he, that name. So I can't really spill all the beans yet, uh, but that is, his, his, his whole biography is gonna be in the book. And a lot of people don't know about Tommy, that he had a famous uncle up here, um, the legendary Flosser Tan Ellison, who uh, was the president of the Palmetto State Barbers Association. He was also the director of social services, Palmetto State Hospital. It was an all black mental health hospital, uh, segregated at the time. And then when integration came in 19, I think the hospital integrated in 1965 and uh, was renamed Crafts Farrell State Hospital and he became the director of social services. So we're going to learn about Floster Ellison um, and his work. Also in the book will be about my grandfather, Wallace Seawright. We're going to learn about his life, my great-grandfather, his father, Robert Seawright. His parents died when he was very young. His daddy died when he was six years old. His mother died when he was eight. And what's interesting about my great-grandfather, he lived here in Columbia. Uh, him and his brother Gaston lived right down Sumter Street, the historic Ward 1 community. So we're going to learn a little bit about Ward 1, the historic African-American community that was displaced in the early 1960s. And he lived there during World War II. And so this book is coming out real soon, and I'm looking forward to it. Okay. Well, we look forward to, uh, to, to learning all about that book and about to have you back as soon as it's uh, completed and, and, and published. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Yeah, thank you for coming out for this week's Author Spotlight, and we look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me.